You know, I think this trailer is unique within the Imagine RV lineup in that it's simple and easy towing with tandem axles and it's lightweight, but it also is simple and easy camping with no slides and less worries. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Bish's RV down here at Grand Design once again. Uh, again, getting some footage of a model I don't think I've had on the channel before, the 21BHE. Um, it's it's kind of similar to a few other layouts I've seen out there where it's a rear corner double over double bunk, campsite dinette, front Murphy bed, but no slide kind of easy breezy beautiful camping girl. What's nice about something like this, uh, again, the simplicity, the ease, the little more peace of mind of having no slide. I'll, there are what I call slide skeptics, but I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion. There are some folks who are just like, listen, I've either had bad experiences with or I've heard bad things about slide outs. I don't want one. Well, it, it, sometimes it can be hard to find something like that, uh, and this is a nice example of one without. It's one of the, I think, the only tandem axle member of the Imagine family with no slides, so there's something to be said for that there. Uh, it's, it's a very proven, very time-tested layout, and I think that they have a very nice execution of theirs. Like, they maintain their, their really good extended season weather package on this. They still have up top 165-watt roof solar package, which will be a, a, a very good battery tender. It's a very glorified battery tender. Not not going to be the be all end all boondock warrior but not every rv is kind of built for that purpose you know they have added some inverter prep and actually something i think is kind of cool um is these now have um anti-lock brake systems on them an abs system factory standard now on every grand design uh tandem axle imagine trailer previously that was found only in reflection uh momentum uh things like that solitude you know so that is a huge towing safety feature where god forbid you have to stab the brakes in a panic brake scenario you will maintain vastly better control of your rv with that abs system and i've personally test driven one they work and they work very well we are very pet friendly very kid friendly with an easy clean floor and a bunch of other really good features it's also got a couple things that you might not like and i'm going to try to do my best to show you both sides of that equation and then you decide if it's the right one for you or not. And if you appreciate that fair approach, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. And I, and I tell you, one of the first things that really struck me on this one is, uh, although, like, when you look at it, you don't think, oh, wow, that thing's got awesome window coverage. But I started looking through this RV and it kind of has awesome window coverage. Uh, when you look at it from the outside, you don't see, like, one giant window to rule them all. But, like, when you're sitting here, especially if you're at the Murphy sofa, where I'm at right now, man, the view's not too bad. Uh, especially if you got kids bopping around. You know, you got windows pretty much all over the place on the campsite of the RV. You can really kind of keep a good idea of what's going on down there. Now, Imagine does a couple things. There. Every brand has their little things they do, right? Um, they're very good about this telescopic uh, dinette pedestal base right here. And what's really cool about that thing is it is very sturdy, very stable, but it's a little more out of the way. Uh, as compared to, you know, like double pedestal bases or something like that. Um, I also really like any time a manufacturer gives us a shoe garage uh, built right into the back of a dinette like that. I think that's a very underutilized feature of the RV industry. It sure doesn't cost a whole lot of money since it's basically air, but it is darn useful. That's something that I like about it. Up top here, you got your centralized air conditioner. Even though it's a no-slide model, they still centralize the air in this. And you might notice the uh, the, the line-based lighting that they have right here. Um, that is a uh, uh, kind of a cool new thing that they sort of applied into this. Um, what's interesting is there's two ways that you can activate it. Uh, so, first of all, if you just, uh, you know, flick the, the main control panel switch, uh, well, that will just turn everything on and off. The funny thing is, it actually does have a dimmer switch, but that is actually a separate switch. You see how they're down low right now? So you don't have to use the dimmer function. You just have the ability to do it. So there's a couple different ways that you can manipulate the lighting on this RV. I don't know that there's any specific benefit to that. I don't know that it was necessarily intentionally considered by Grand Design when they made this model. I think it's just a thing that exists. So I point it out and you decide what works for you. I don't believe the XLS series uh, always had these, but the uh, the blackout roller shades as opposed to the uh, pleated day-night shades are nice. And you'll see that each bunk does also have its own individual privacy curtain, which is nice. Each bunk also having its own uh, USB plugs and household plug, also very nice. 
Um, this RV does not have any sort of folding cargo bunk functionality, however. Uh, for some folks, that's uh, a bit of a bummer. And I, I'd have to look at it from the outside because I know, like, under here is the water heater. I think the ladder might be kind of centrally mounted, which might be a problem. I wonder if it's possible if they move the ladder, if that could be a folding cargo bunk. I'm kind of curious. Is that anything you'd personally be interested in? Um, I suspect the answer is yes, but I don't know. Maybe not Not everybody. Not everybody likes those things necessarily. But I don't see a sticker for the bunk weight ratings. I'm shooting from that. I think they're like 350 pound rated on these Imagines, but um, please, please, if you if that's really important to you, please double check uh, with our local team members so that we can verify that for you. Oh, well, sorry. Um, one of the fellows here was kind enough to grab me a, uh, a sandwich while I was recording, and I apparently didn't get the wrapper out of here. As you can tell, I had myself a submarine sandwich for lunch, or as they call them in a submarine, just a sandwich for lunch. Um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, the, uh, the kitchen counter space is not amazing. It's, it is fairly minimal, uh, because they do go with a full size stove, but they are still including an oven that a lot of manufacturers don't. And they do give us a big farm sink here. I also like how they give us a full sink cover. What's your opinion on this? I like it when a manufacturer lets me fully cover the sink. That's useful to me. I can make that do things like I can dry dishes on it or, or I can set groceries on it. But a lot of manufacturers will give us a sink cover that only covers half the sink because I'm sure it's five cents cheaper. Is that, I mean, do you prefer that? Is that better or is that not better? I, I don't know. Speaking of not better, I'll tell you. If um, what you're looking for is an RV where you can sit inside and watch TV all day, this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it at all. That TV can pivot, but like no seat in the house really has a good view of the entertainment center. Like, uh, frankly, I think your, uh, your forward facing dinette bench and your top bunk, which is basically where we are right now in the video, um, those, uh, are probably the best seats in the house. Uh, that being said, uh, to each their own, I, I think a no slide model like this, the goal is to get your family out and have some memories. It's not necessarily to sit inside and, uh, watch TV all day. Uh, but, uh, again, each person has a, a, a different way about things, I, I do suppose. Now, this is a Murphy bed model. I'm um, giving you just a very quick demo here. It's a folding, what I call bendy bed. It is lightweight. It's easy to operate, but it's not like gastro mechanically assisted. What's cool about this system, um, if you want to leave the bed up and travel down the road, you're fine. If you want to leave the bed down and travel down the road, you're also fine. And they do include a, a surprisingly thick and heavy privacy curtain for this. Like you notice, you can't really see a lot of like light bleeding through uh, when I pull that curtain across. A lot of manufacturers don't give us any privacy curtain. And the ones that do, it, typically it's like it's so threadbare that it doesn't really, it doesn't, it, it's Shania Twain and it's not, it don't impress me much. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea. The uh, dinette, again, can fold down into a sleeper if need be, and that's what's kind of cool. This RV has four separate sleepers. You have your front uh, camp queen bed, short queen. You've got the two double bunks, and then you can fold down the dinette if you want. So you could very easily sleep five in here, assuming one of the kids is a little bit smaller on the dinette. Um, or if you're willing to double them up on the, the bunks, you could probably get up to seven in here. That's really pushing it and that's little kids though seven bodies in this thing on a rainy day stuck inside would definitely not be my uh personal flavor flave but uh everyone's got their own thing oh perfect thank you motion light did you see that motion light kick off right there you wake up at night you gotta see your way into the bathroom perfect little nighttime navigation light it's motion sensitive it's not so bright that it's gonna like you know blind anybody it's not it's down low where it's not a a problem whatsoever Speaking of down low, let me get down low. Aha! I was like, there better be some kitchen outlets over here. There's one set of uh, household outlets, which one set of outlets sounds insufficient. But if you look at it, the outlets and the, the wireless charge pad are in the only chunk of available counter space. So the outlets, I don't know, to me, they make a lot of sense where they're at. Because if you put outlets somewhere else, they wouldn't do you any good anyway. Is my two cents. No slides, no floor vents, no carpet. No worries. Just nice and easy that way. And I wish more manufacturers would do this. The little towel bar built right onto the door. Man, 
Stuff like this is so handy. And there's a lot of people who, like, a lot of manufacturers, oh, people could add that stuff, that's easy. Yeah, but a lot of people don't like drilling screws and stuff uh, into the woodwork of their RV. Like, I, I don't I don't like that. I don't like doing stuff like that. Like, um, we mounted some shelves on a, uh, like, we remodeled our living room at home, put some fancy wood stuff up on the wall. Then we wanted to mount some shelves to it. Man, that was spooky. Running screws through all that money that you just spent? That's spooky. I like it when somebody else does it for me. Uh, what I don't like when someone else does for me is go to the bathroom. Thankfully, you can see that there's plenty of space here for me to do that all by my lonesome. Uh, the counter space in this is also pretty surprisingly good. The um, These little countertops that sort of stick out a little thin like that, I used to think they were kind of dumb, and then I went out and I tried one, and I found all kinds of uses for them. You know, you got a lot of small stuff, like contact lens cases and stuff in bathrooms. I thought it was super useful myself. Um, the RV is six and a half foot tall. If you're a little over six foot like me, by the time you step up into the shower pan, you are going to have your head in the skylight. So that is the thing to consider. Also, both the bathroom and here in the main cabin have power vent fans. They are the smaller variety. You could upgrade on that if you were so inclined. But from the factory, there is no sort of upgrade swaption option anything like that so before we step outside i like to ask where'd they nail it where'd they fail it what do you like about this and how could they improve it a little bit further and if you got a tow package half ton you will likely find that a very nice pairing for a camper like this um it has uh a, what is it just around 14 1500 pounds of available cargo carry capacity as well which for a little camper like this i think is pretty darn reasonable that's pretty good i'm not upset with that whatsoever However, up front here, due to the way that that, uh, that that window and the baggage door eat up some sidewall space, they were not able to put a massive awning on it. But one thing that Imagine is actually very good about is they tend to maximize their awnings wherever they possibly can. They're, they're, they tend to be very good about that, as a matter of fact. And what do you think about this? Um, the XLS series has maintained the more traditional fold-out steps, although they're using the like anti-slip, what I call like boat dock steps, the aluminum plank steps with the little ridgy grippers on them. Technical term, by the way, ridgy grippers. That sounds like... <laughs> That sounds like some kind of nickname that uh, uh, our Australian friends and cousins might have for like, I don't know, some some lizard. Like, oh, it's a ridgy gripper. Oh, that was oh, that was terrible. My Aussie friends, please don't knock me for that. You know, Americans, we all sound like cowboys to you, and we can't do your voices. So uh, anyway, all I know is that we all miss Steve Irwin. The man was a saint. Um, moving on from there. You can see that we are inverter prepped. It's it's a base level of inverter prep. It's not like, oh, you plug in an inverter and run the air conditioner. It's nothing like that. It's just something where if you want to be able to power up a couple outlets, you can do that. And because it is a Murphy bed, it does dog leg around the uh, pass through a little bit. But there's still plenty of space here. There's also full front baggage uh, compartment lighting. And you might see a little motion sensor over here on the left coming into view on the on the left motion sensor. We're where, where, oh, oh, it's up top. I'm like, where, I'm yelling at the motion sensor like it's going to be like, here I am. I'm an idiot. Anyway, solar charge controller up here, uh, by the way. Um, that's actually something that they have improved uh, from previous years. It's now a 40 amp MPPT charge controller. What that means in English, if you want to expand on that a little bit, you can. And an MPPT charge controller is essentially more efficient than a PWM controller. That's one of those things, if you're shopping an RV, if you've never owned an RV, if you're not a solar genius, I'm not a solar genius, I'll tell you that much, I'm a solar idiot. I'm, I, I know just enough to get myself in trouble, really. But long, one of the things I have learned is there's a PWM and an MPT, MPPT charge controller. You down with MPPT? Yeah, you know me. Anyway, um, this one just works better. It's more efficient. It captures juice. The other one doesn't. Now down here, these have had Goodyear Endurance radials, but you might notice the red uh, wheel hubs inside there. That is uh, straight from the manufacturer, the chassis manufacturer, who also stand, or includes their um, ABS anti-lock brake system on this floor plane. And that is something that they're doing kind of across the board because it wasn't really clear which RVs in the market had ABS and which RVs in the market did not have ABS. So they made it very visual. Now, red may not be everyone's preference, 
Um, I'm guessing if Grand Design had their pick, they'd probably go with some kind of blue or something like that. But red is what uh, the uh, Lippert, the ABS supplier, chose to use. But it is an awesome system. If you have to hit the brakes, uh, stop in a hurry, if you're on slippery roads or something, it does an amazing job of keeping that RV tracking behind you. ABS doesn't necessarily uh, make you stop faster. What it does is it allows you to maintain safety and control. Uh, because like if you're on a bumpy road and there's road chatter or ice, if you stab the brakes, the trailer might try to turn and like, it'll try to pass you because it doesn't stop as fast as your vehicle. Well, this will basically prevent that from happening and it works very, very well. Um, the roof ladder, I love that it's a built on ladder and it gets you up there to that fully walkable roof. On the back, the single axle Imagines, the AIM series, have a class two hitch, which is uh, only 150 pound rated. When, once we get up here into XLS and above to full Imagine, we get the uh, uh, the full two inch receiver hitch, the class three, that's got a 300 pound vertical limit on it. Um, what you won't see much of is what's going on under the belly because it is enclosed, it is forced air heated, and there is a radiant barrier layering there. Uh, that is a, uh, a very respectable extended season weather package is what they have going on. Uh, the, uh, on the back side there, you've got your um, tankless on-demand water heater. So like, especially in a bunk model like this, if you got to have a bunch of people taking showers, get ready to go the night before, Everybody can do that and nobody has to deal with a chilly shower, which is something I personally really like because I'll tend to let my family go first and I almost always end up with a cold shower whenever I go camping. But hey, uh, this thing also, this is all standard, by the way. Number one question I get, it's like family feud. Number one answer on the board is, can I get it without a camp kitchen? It is standard. That being said, the griddle, the fridge, my stuff could be removed. You know, you could probably find another use for that fridge somewhere. I know I certainly would. If you don't want the griddle, put it on Facebook Marketplace for a few bucks. 30 different people are going to go, hey, is that still available? And then they're going to ghost you. And then somebody will finally buy it for a few bucks off you. Um, up in here, I, I kind of, I wish there was like a little power outlet or something. That would be a nice little box. But oops, hold on. I, now, I'm supposed to, if I was smart and not an idiot, I would lock that in place so that it doesn't go flying around. And you can use that either as a grease shield or fold it down for like a little function utility tray kind of thing. Uh, it just kind of depends on whatever you want to do it. Now, you also don't have to fully extend the griddle like I've done. You can just pull out the box portion of it if that's what you need. Um, one other note, it doesn't have TPMS standard, but it is TPMS prepped. It's a simple, easy plug and play system. Now, if you've been around camping for a while, you've probably seen various versions of floor plans like this. I'd be curious, how do you think the Imagine version stacks up versus the rest? I will leave you a link in the video description. Uh, if I can think of a couple similar floor plans offhand that I have videos on, I'll leave them linked on there. But you can also check our website to see if we have one of these in stock, where it is, and the given MSRP. We do offer discounted sale pricing on every RV that we carry at Bishop's RV. We do not sell for MSRP. But manufacturer policy guidelines do prevent us from advertising our discounted sale price. That is not my preference. That is just the reality. And I want you to, to walk into this with good expectations and not feel like you're getting took or anything like that. So contact our team. We can certainly get you a better figure than what you see in line. And when you're ready, we're ready. Until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.